We have a lot of eyes on Pittsburgh and there's a lot happening here. A lot happening in the way of new technology. Morning. Good morning. How you doing, Miss Carolyn? New careers, new opportunities. Very good. The employment situation in this region has reached a critical juncture. The challenge is finding people to fill jobs in Pittsburgh's ever-changing workforce. If we don't have people here to fill these jobs, we can't grow as a region. Mentoring, training, forming partnerships, making sure future job opportunities are opportunities for all. I went into welding because it's not going anywhere. Um, we have industrialized our entire society and we're only gonna continue to build. My name is Katie Boyce. I'm a student here at Pittsburgh Technical College for welding technology and I'm in my fourth term. The idea of melting metal has always kind of fascinating me. As a welding student coming into a trade school, the main things that you're going to learn, I would say, would be basically just the fundamentals of a weld. I mean, that's where the foundation is. That's your stepping stone and your start. As far as the industry goes, as long as you learn those stepping stones and you work hard, you can go out and make $100,000 a year. This country relies on metal for a little bit of everything. The workforce in welding is aging. We need a younger generation to fill those spots. In the Pittsburgh region, I would say it's booming. There's industry everywhere. I talk to employers all the time, and they're beating our door down for welders. Welding is worldwide, and if you want to travel and go overseas and weld, it's perfectly possible. You go where you want and do what you want and build what you want. There's welds literally everywhere. Whatever you want to build, you can build it. Wherever your imagination can take you, you can take yourself. Art is more accessible than you think it is. It's not very necessary to have a degree in the arts because art itself is very subjective. There are programs that are accessible and free. I work as a game programmer for Digital Dream Labs. My primary job is to program the gameplay, the UI implementation, create shaders and various visual effects for the game. People here uh, come from various backgrounds with the passion to make games or videos or animations. Even artists, programmers, designers and producers. I animate for all character assets or almost all of them for the game. My interest in art has always been with me. I've always been interested in comic books and later on animation. I think that it's one of the most effective ways to do storytelling in our culture right now. The team comes together and then everyone brings some ideas to the table like what is the character, what are the basic actions of the game and the basic goals. And once we all are excited about one idea, that's when we take it to the next phase of the prototype. We talk together and plan out what character design do we like best. From there on, we would make spreadsheets of each of their movement, how they would move. If I were to wave my hand, it's very simple, here and here. And then I would just have to fill out everything in between. And that's what usually animation is. So nowadays programming is widely used in everything, not just uh, games. When it comes to working as an animator, there are different ways that you can work. I feel like uh, the game industry has evolved a lot and now is like a very good time to be in this industry. There is basically no cost to anyone that comes into our program. There is a small fee, out-of-pocket fee, to buy your books and some tools to get started. But uh, once you're in our program, there isn't a monthly fee that you pay or pay per year. You come here and we're basically teaching you for free. 
Basically, an iron worker is someone who you may not have noticed every day when you're driving down the road, but we erect all the structural steel that you see out on the bridges, highways, that concrete that all the stadium seating is in, office buildings, all the windows that go up on the outside of these skyscrapers. When we talk about iron workers in the future, they're always going to be needed. The work climate in Pittsburgh is really good right now. The truth is most iron workers do the job because of what they're building. Most of our training is hands-on, so we try to do about 40% theory and about 60% hands-on. Two of the most important things that, that we look for in iron workers are our work ethic and their attendance. We have apprentices from 18 to 61 with all very diverse backgrounds, males, females. The opportunity is here for anyone that wants to get into our trade. I drive into downtown Pittsburgh. I can see a lot of structures that I worked on personally. It's a pretty proud feeling to say that you were part of that. Robotics as a field is creating a huge demand for people, right? Like these robots do not build themselves. We need armies of smart, dedicated, resourceful people to come up with them, put them together, get them out into the field, make them useful. Robotics is a very broad technology with a lot of parts. To me, it's making the next generation of tools for people. A robot might have a lot of computation to do a lot of planning, thinking, reacting to the world. And then there are parts of it that are involved in controlling the motion, motors, gears, sensors, software, all involved in just making a single joint move. Here at Hebi and in robotics in general, there's a wide range of requirements for what we need to be able to make all this work. People that have spent years and years in school at the leading edge of their field. Then we have people that are straight out of high school. There's tons of work in software and machine learning, artificial intelligence, computer vision, creating new sensors. There's also bio-inspired robotics. It is a growing field. We're competing with Silicon Valley because all these people are here in Pittsburgh and competing for the same talent that we are in terms of developers, researchers, engineers. We're looking for people that have amazing attention detail and are really lifelong learners. Whether you're writing software or whether you're actually physically assembling modules, we need people that can learn as things are changing because they're evolving rapidly. No matter what your interest is, don't be afraid to just dive into the details, take something apart. Learning how to do that is, I think, really how you get the bug for learning. People come into the IBW NECA apprenticeship program with all levels of experience. They learn all the things that they need to know to be an electrician through our IBW NECA apprenticeship program. Our electricians work on everything from high voltage systems to building automation systems, electrical vehicle charging stations, industrial facilities like the Shell Cracker plant, Heinz Field, and the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. There's a really high demand for electricians right now. Solar energy, wind energy, all types of clean and renewable energy is something that our electricians are trained to do and something that we will be seeing more of in the future. The IBW NECA apprenticeship program is a five-year paid apprenticeship program and students in the program don't pay for their education. My name is Andy Sibinak. I'm a union electrician for the IBEW. I've always been a hands-on type of worker. I went through a four-year college, got my degree. I work as a logistics broker doing computer work every day. It just wasn't for me, so I got into the Local 5 apprenticeship program. There's power from when you turn your light on at home to anywhere you go. Everything needs maintained, everything's updating, so it's a very busy time. I think in the future it's just going to keep growing and growing. IBW electricians make family sustaining wages and they get family sustaining benefits that are second to none. There's a lot of job security in being an electrician. And a lot of times they even find it rewarding and they love doing it. There are going to be about 30,000 jobs available in this sector in the next five to ten years. So low to medium skill manufacturing jobs, 
um, anywhere from entry level manufacturing jobs to engineers. There's a lot of potential. And there's a lot of opportunities for students to come through programming such as ourselves and really get good careers. We are a workforce development initiative and we are really tailored towards connecting people with jobs in advanced manufacturing. So we do machining classes, CNC programming and operations, and we do a CAD CAM class. If you look at jobs in advanced manufacturing, a lot of people have this preconceived idea that it's a steel mill from the 1970s. But when in fact, they're all really sophisticated environments and they're you know clean, climate controlled atmospheres. Before I came to this program, the first thing that came to mind with manufacturing was just you sitting on an assembly line and just passing things left to right. There's a lot more than you just putting pieces together. A lot of this equipment, it's all high tech now. There's a lot of computer applications associated with these machines that you can run a machine with your iPhone. Pittsburgh has this urban manufacturing renaissance. There are companies that manufacture 3D printers, fabric from recycled water bottles found in Haiti. There's a lot of Department of Defense work. There's a lot of companies that are making stuff for the tech industry, so are making the satellite mounts for the self-driving cars. There's a lot of opportunities to be in this sector and, and do interesting work. I thought manufacturing in America was gone. There wasn't people doing it. And there's probably 10 shops within a mile of where anybody lives. It's a great career to go into. I'm 17, I just got out of high school. It's pretty cool to be able to do this, something I actually enjoy, something that's gonna pay well. Southwestern Pennsylvania is growing in manufacturing and companies have never been this desperate for hiring people. I started this program two months ago. It feels good that I could say that I've learned a whole new entire skill within a short amount of time, and I also have a job lined up as well. It feels good to know there's other options out there for you to make a living and make a name for yourself. In terms of, of other positions within the FBI, you don't necessarily need a master's degree, but a computer background certainly will help. And one of the things that helps with that is the STEM program, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And there are different STEM schools within the Pittsburgh area, uh, but that's one way to start out getting that cyber background. There's a lot of stuff that bad guys can do on the internet with your information. So my name is Erica Totaro and I'm an Intel analyst at the NCFTA. I see every day there's something new, a new breach, a new vulnerability. The cybercrime realm is only going to grow. That's why we need an elite team of cyber investigators, special agents, computer forensics, computer scientists. My name is Michael McEwen. I'm a supervisory special agent with the Pittsburgh FBI field office. The FBI is one of the partners of the NCFTA, the National Cyber and Forensics Training Alliance. We, in conjunction with other industry partners, work together to try to solve cybercrime. The threat is never going to go away, so we need more people in the field who understand how it works. I like the feeling that I'm doing something good. I know that this interests me and that I can use that interest to help other people. So at SSPC, we have a wide range of different training courses and certifications. So there is a career pathway for people in the industry that want to become blasters or painters. SSPC holds about 700 classes a year. Protective coating is something that's going to protect the substrate from corrosion. And if you're talking about what is a substrate, that's a steel or concrete industrial structure. There are coating systems where they applied the coating to a bridge or to a water tank years ago, and that system starts to fail because of salt and degradation to the coating. So the process to apply a coating starts with the surface preparation of the structure. The role of a blaster is to ensure that the surface is clean. You then start applying an industrial grade type of coating. Commonly, the person that might want to get into this line of work would be someone who likes to work with their hands. So someone that isn't going to want to sit behind a desk 40 hours a week. Someone in this industry could be on a bridge one day, on a ship the next day. Buildings as well, the stadiums. All of these things have corrosion issues that a blaster or painter would be able to keep the corrosion from happening on those structures.
there are competitive wages out there that are equal to four-year degrees that you might get. So through high school, I took a lot of engineering courses, took a lot of uh, physics courses, and a lot of math courses. Uh, with associate's degrees, you can pretty much be a technician on the machines or a designer. Engineers will get more into the, the heavy mathematical equations on how to properly make these machines efficient. My name is Max Sings. I'm electrical designer here at the X1 company. Additive manufacturing is the technology where you add layers upon layers of material to form a three-dimensional part. We can pretty much make almost anything. We can go from the auto industry, the heavy energy industry, the mining industry, art and deco, to consumer grade parts. What this technology allows you to do is make more complex, more efficient printed parts. We always say, oh no, you could never print that, and we give it a shot and we're like, oh wow, it's a new capability that this machine has never had. With my two associate's degrees, I found a wonderful experience here. Really, I'm enjoying myself. If you have a passion and you just have that undying urge to like make something work, then you know, follow your dreams. One of the nice things about my current role is we have five or six or seven jobs we're over each year and everyone's different. So every single time we start a new job, we're evaluating the way the wells were drilled, the new technologies that are available. We're always coming up with a new design or a new way to do things. It's never the same. My name is David Phillips. I'm a completions engineer at CNX Resources. In the oil and gas industry, we drill for natural gas. After the drilling has been completed, there's some additional steps we have to do to get the gas to come to surface. And that's my responsibility as a completions engineer. We pump water and sand at high rates and high pressures to break up the rock. Once that rock is broken up, we're able to flow gas and oil to surface. Two days a week, I'll head out to the field to our job locations, meet with our consultants and representatives out in the field, and make sure the job is going as planned. And then other two days a week, we spend time in the office writing procedures, doing our modeling, different technical tasks that are completed. Completions has a lot of new technologies, which makes our job exciting things like Evolution, which is a new fracturing technology that we use. It's electric instead of diesel, so it's much more clean, it's quieter, less noise, less truck traffic, much more environmentally friendly. The majority of the people who hold my position as a completions engineer would study petroleum and natural gas engineering in college. The oil and gas industry is a global industry, and there's opportunities all over the world. Within the United States, it is a more limited market where you can work, but there is a lot of opportunities within the country. I would recommend this job to a lot of people. It's a very fast-paced job. It keeps you engaged. Never a boring day when you come to the office. It's a high-paying job that can really provide for your family. It's very rewarding, so I'm very lucky. Partner Up is the way that we are working to solve the problem of having a shortfall of workers in the Pittsburgh region and also looking to make sure that our young folks have a great idea of the opportunities that do exist. So last time we talked about branding and professionalism, so someone recap what a personal brand is for me. We go into the school districts and deliver a career development program. It's really focused on giving students ideas of what we as employers think is important as they make these big decisions about what comes after high school graduation. We're trying to send them a message. I did not know what I wanted to do out of high school, so that was something that stressed me out a lot. And so when I learned about the Partner Up program, it kind of was like, this is something else you can do until you figure it out. And I actually ended up liking it a lot, so I'm just like, maybe this is what I was supposed to do. <laughs> As part of Partner Up, we're going in and meeting the students where they're at, working through skills, helping them build resumes, prep them for interviews, with the ultimate goal that they would be hired at our partner companies as well as PNC. PNC has a host of entry-level jobs. Some of our other employer partners have roles as nursing assistant or nursing support, roles where you're setting up cable and internet for large providers in the area, as well as in-store support for some of our utility companies and even large local grocers here in the Pittsburgh region. The more I went to the meetings, I was more and more intrigued with PNC. The fact that I stuck with it and stayed is something I'm definitely proud of myself for. Hello, how may I assist you? 
assist you today.